Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and today I wanted to go over the event tab of the map editor in RPG developer Bakin. For those completely new to the engine, I just wanted to sort of give an overview slash tour of all of the event templates that are available by default at the very beginning. These are all events that you can simply choose from and place directly on your map. You can edit their parameters if you wish, or even change them into advanced events, but if you're just trying to get your prototype up and running, or you just need a simple event such as a NPC that talks to your character when you stand next to them and press the A button or an innkeeper or a shopkeep, the event system here will have you covered. Let's begin. So first in the map editor, we have three different tabs on the right hand side of the screen. The first for terrains, the second for objects, and the third for events. You can actually choose from many different folders or categories of events. And then there are different events available in the window below. You can place any of these events simply by clicking on them and then clicking on your spot on the map that you want the event to be placed in. And then if there are parameters to edit, you may edit your parameters here in the pop-up window that appears next. You'll notice there are check marks next to each of the event categories or folders, and these will toggle the visibility of that category of events in the list below. So if you check all of them, you'll be able to see all of the events and scroll through the entire list. But say if you just wanted to choose from the category of trap events, you could select that folder and only the trap events would be visible now in the lower window. So to start, we'll look at all of the events in the stationary folder. The custom event, which allows you to fully customize an event yourself and basically start from scratch, is always available as the top choice in any folder. Next, we've got stationary add to the party. This allows you to place an event where an NPC that you can talk to will join your party. You can choose the event graphic, the large graphic, which hero cast to add to the party, the dialogue when they join the party, message after they join, and message if they they are unable to join. As mentioned, you can convert this to a custom event and do things like completely customize the logic of how this event works or even remove parts like the after join message. Instead of a simple display conversation and then the member just simply joining the party, you can offer a choice to the hero to allow the member to join or not, that sort of thing. Remember, if you do convert any of these events to a custom event, there's no going back. They will not revert to their former <laughs> template selves at least not in that instance, you can always take another new event and plop it on the map to get back to this template screen for each event. Now, since all of the events can be converted to custom events, I won't be going over that feature again. You can simply know that it is available to use if you'd like to customize any of the following events. So next, we have stationary leave the party. And you can, of course, choose the event graphic as well as the dialogue when the character leaves the party and the message that displays after they leave the party. Next up is speak. This is one one of the most simple events there are. You can choose the event graphic and the dialogue. Next up is conversation, where the right character speaks first. The event graphic will stand in one spot, and then you'll get to choose the left and right large graphics. Now, what they mean by large graphics, this is actually your opportunity to display, say, a character bust would be the most common example. Although the preview does not make this look right, it's not actually going to display this way. Let's actually try this out. And it works as expected with the character busts appearing on the left and right of the message box. Next is conversation where the left character speaks first. This is the exact same thing as the other one, but the left character will now speak first instead. Next is give the player an item. You can choose the pronoun a, an, or the just to make this term make sense and choose which item it is. The player will get graphic and large graphic, the dialogue when given the item, the dialogue after you are given the item, and the dialogue when the item is in possession, which basically means if you've already got the item, this NPC will not give it to you. You can, of course, convert that to a custom event to change those conditions. Next up is question. This NPC will ask you a question, and then you can choose from a yes or no answer. The yes and no can be customized in the custom event, but you can set up an answer to give from the NPC when the player selects yes or no. Next is an NPC that combines the give the player an item with the question logic. Now, the NPC will ask the player a question, and if you say yes, they'll give you an item. And if you say no, they'll just wish you well on your journey. You can, of course, 
edit the NPC graphic as well as the large graphic, question dialogue, the dialogue when selecting yes and no, and the dialogue after given the item and when the item is already in possession. You can also select, of course, the item as well as the pronoun that refers to it. Next up is different conversation with an item. This is an NPC that will run a check on an item that you specify, and if you have the item, he will have special dialogue. If not, they'll just rattle off this default dialogue. Next is stationary exchanging items. Here you have an NPC that will ask to exchange an item for another item if you have the required item in your possession. This NPC will check to see if you have an item and then ask you whether you'd like to exchange the item or not. You can customize every aspect of the dialogue and the responses to choices as well as which item to check for and which item to exchange for. Next up is stationary. Move to the left with an item. This NPC will stand in one spot and if you have the item required to pass when you talk to it, it will move one step to the left. You can customize the item that's required to be had, the event graphic and bus graphic, dialogue without the item, dialogue with the item, dialogue after allowing to pass, and the dialogue when you've already passed them. The next event NPC is move to the right with an item. And this is the exact same thing as move to the left, except they will move to the right. A lot of these are going to seem redundant if you do have custom event or event panel knowledge. But remember, this is to template fast events. This NPC will actually tell you to give them a key item if you want to pass. This time, the item isn't just in your possession, it is actually given to the NPC and then they move out of the way. And of course, move to the right when given an item is here as well. You can customize every aspect of the dialogue with both of these events. Getting close to the end of the stationary events, there is speak to battle. This one is escapable. When you speak to this NPC, the battle will begin. You can choose which monster to fight, a reward for winning and the pronoun to refer to that item, the event graphic, the bust graphics, and the battle background, as well as the dialogue when you first speak to the NPC. In this case, it's a classic. Would you look at that? I think I just found dinner. The next is very useful speak to battle, inescapable, but no game over. This is an NPC you can drop. You cannot escape from the battle, but you will not lose the game if you lose the battle. There will be no game over. You will still get the opportunity to customize a message when the player loses, if the player loses. And all of the aspects that are editable from the last event are here as well. And the last in the stationary category is the speak to battle inescapable. This is a battle that will commence and then not allow the player to escape and they can game over. All of the aspects of the previous two events are here for you to edit. So we meet at last. Your luck ends here. Come meet your maker. And those are all of the stationary events that can be placed on your map using RPG developer Bakin. Next, we'll take a quick look at a related category, the walking category. Many of the events in the walking category are actually the exact same as the stationary, except for the NPC will be walking around your map instead of standing still. Taking a look at the very first event, walking add to party, we can customize all of the same things, but this NPC will walk randomly. Obviously, if you'd like to change exactly how they walk and whether that is is truly random, you can convert this to a custom event and change their movement speed, movement pattern, and movement frequency, as well as their movement range. The only other noteworthy events in the walking category that are somewhat interesting slash different from the stationary, that we have a slowly walking as well as a running speak NPC, a walking and slowly walking question NPC, and that's it for the stationary and walking categories of events included with RPG developer Bakin. There are many, many more events to go over and I'll go over them all in this sub-series that is intended for brand new users or people who aren't sure what RPG developer Bakin is capable of right out of the box. After we finish going over the rest of the events, we will get into intermediate event topics. But that is all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing for more premier Bakin educational content, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>